Greetings Exiles, Bullshifter here, back with another PS4 Path of Exile Beginner's Guide. Today, we will be covering the Immortal Syndicate. Now, the Immortal Syndicate, or as it was known as the Betrayal League previously, this is one of the more complicated systems within the game. However, I also find that is one of the more rewarding systems, as well as one of the more fun systems of the game. So, as I had mentioned previously in one of my videos, there is a way to guarantee that you find one of these maps each day on reset. It will be the, uh, it's a little hard to describe, but it's Jun's maps, which are typically the, uh, it'll be the little gold icon with the wings. I would show you it in my atlas, but I'm actually still waiting for my daily reset. Um, fortunately, I was uh, lucky enough to actually run a random map here where I can tell the Immortal Syndicate is here because I can see the three little green icons there on the map representing Syndicate members, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner of my mini-map. Or if I pull the overhead map there, you can see them a bit more obviously. So I'm not 100% positive as to what I'm gonna be walking into here. However, my assumption is this is gonna be a fortification mission which is kind of where I want to start this video at. There are four different branches of the Syndicate. There is Fortification, Transportation, Research, and Intervention. Now, they will show up randomly throughout maps, one of those four, when you do run into a Syndicate mission. And each one offers its own unique, uh, I, I guess we'll just call them missions. For fortification, this is when you will see the syndicate members kind of hiding away in a base with uh, usually some defenses, some turrets and things, and a bunch of other enemies will attack you as well. Uh, they're fortified, so that's kind of the way to connect that to fortification. Uh, and your goal will essentially be to defeat them in spite of their base. Uh, the other types of missions you can run into, if you ran, run into the transportation division of the syndicate, uh, they will be essentially running a convoy from one point of the map to another. And your goal is to defeat them before they can get to their end destination. So on that map, or on that mi mission rather, I would essentially get to the front of that convoy as fast as I possibly can and just spam those syndicate members, defeat them before that convoy can get to where it's going. The third is probably one of the most difficult, which is research. Uh, research, they'll show up in an underground research laboratory. You'll actually see John waiting outside of the laboratory and you'll have the option to enter it much as you would a different area of the map. Now when you enter it, they're going to be destroying evidence inside of the research lab. And your goal is to protect the research, which isn't a very good description of what you actually need to do. So your goal in that particular mission is going to be basically defeating the enemies and defeating the main syndicate member in that area before they destroy that research. So there's two ways you can go about doing this. You can rush through and all of the different evidence crates that you see, defeat those enemies around it that are attacking it quickly, and continue to move through the map until you get to the Syndicate boss at the end. And there should be some relatively clear icons on your mini or overhead map showing you where they are. Now, if you find that you don't have the damage output to get that done quickly enough, then your best option is going to be to simply rush to that end syndicate member and defeat them because once they're defeated, the mission is over. And as long as there's enough evidence left remaining, you will pass your research mission. So I know there's been a few people asking about the uh, research lab. Unfortunately, in this run, I did not get a research lab, but that's the research lab in a nutshell. So you either want to defeat those enemies that are destroying that evidence quickly and move through the map, or if you just don't find that you have the quick damage output in order to be able to do that before they destroy the research, rush that end syndicate member, put them out of their misery, and you will complete the mission that way. The last group is intervention. Uh, intervention is kind of interesting because you'll actually be the victim of an assassination attempt. They're going to essentially jump you while you are typically fighting a rare or elite creature. And the objective there is to essentially defeat them before they can defeat you, and you'll complete the mission that way. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure this is a fortification mission and they're sitting there in their base. 
So we'll go through, we'll run the mission, we will defeat them, and then we'll go through more of the actual syndicate map, your options with the characters, and just exactly what your rewards and um, goals are within the Immortal Syndicate. Yep, and just as I thought, they are sitting in their base. So they've got this healing totem here. Fortress wall, so we're just going to go in here guns a blazing. Fire! Alright, so it looks like one finally had the courage to come out, and we're going to make him pay for that. Sorry, Hillock. Today is not your day, bud. And I thought there were three, but the third one may have just taken off like a coward. So here we have Asling and Hillock. Now they are likely both with the fortification group. Unfortunately, we can't talk to John. However, we can view everything that we'll want to see on the Syndicate map simply by speaking with them here. So once you complete your mission, you're going to get two options for each Syndicate member that is still around at the end of your mission that you've defeated. L1 will always be Interrogate. Now what Interrogate does is it essentially imprisons them in this little area down here towards the bottom. You will gain a specific amount of intelligence for three turns while they were imprisoned, and that's the benefit. However, the downside is when you imprison them, they will lose a rank, and they will also potentially be moved to a different group. So Asling here is a rank one, so she's going to give us three intelligence towards fortification for three turns, so nine total intelligence. However, she will lose a rank, so she will be unranked and likely not have a connection to any of these four factions. Because I believe if you're an unranked member, you do not have a direct connection, which are actually represented by those yellow ropes. So here you see Karel, Jorgen, and Haku. They are all connected to transportation. So Karel is the lieutenant of fortification and Jorgen and Haku are his underlings. Now the leader of transportation we have not yet run into on this board so they are represented by a question mark. Now when it refers to the intelligence gain here, now I said you would gain nine total intelligence, that will then be added to this bar you see, well actually she's connected to fortification, so that would be added to this fortification bar. Once you gather 100 intelligence, you can then run the fortification safe house, which will give you specific rewards based on who is currently in the fortification safe house, which will typically be obviously the leader of fortification and I believe up to four other members that are directly attached to fortification, so ones that have that yellow rope connecting them to that. Now a way to see the rewards that you will get from the members that are in fortification. Uh, right now we are looking at Asling. If we hit X to examine Asling, that very bottom area where it says preserving veiled armor, that actually lets us know what she will drop in that safe house. Now that's not what she's going to necessarily drop here when we've defeated her in a fortification mission only once we've reached that 100 intel and run the fortification safe house. So make sure you don't get those two kind of mixed up. Now above that, it shows us that she is a sergeant of fortification, basically just stating which area she's with and her name. Now, let's see, it won't let me highlight other members until we make a decision here, it looks like. So, something to note, because my other option is to execute Asling. Now, keep in mind this is the Immortal Syndicate, so executing isn't going to necessarily remove her from the board entirely and make her, you know, deceased. It's not going to permanently kill her. Um, what it's going to do is raise her one rank, so she will then have two stars. The star in the upper right hand corner, that reflects the character's rank. You can be anywhere from unranked to a rank three. And what rank is going to influence is when you run that safe house to get the reward that I had mentioned, the higher the rank of that particular character, 
the better the reward is going to be. So you'll get a higher tiered reward. Um, it will still be that same reward, but the items will be better that you receive. And it will be based off of everyone that is in that safe house. It used to be based off of just the leader. However, that was patched before the game even came to PS4. So that way, everyone who is in the fortification safe house, when you run the fortification safe house, um, their rank and their rewards will be reflected upon themselves and not just the safe house leader. So we could execute her to gain her a rank, which is probably what we'll end up doing. However, say we don't like that option. We can just close out of here and we can go and talk to Hillock. Possibly. <laughs> so obviously in prison, we have the same option there. Um, or we can execute, he will gain a rank, and he will move to fortification. Now the reason why he's going to move to fortification when he gains that rank is because currently he does not have a yellow rope connecting him anywhere. It's actually kind of random that he showed up for fortification because of the fact that the only ropes he has are green ropes, and green ropes just represent a positive relationship with someone else in the Syndicate. Basically, it signifies that they are friends and that they will occasionally back each other up on these random missions and a smaller possibility of being in the safe house with them as well. However, um, it is, like I said, odd that he's shown up for this mission because his only positive relationship is with Leo, who is in intervention and not in fortification. So I think we will go ahead and we'll execute Hillock. And as you can see, he is now under fortification. So now we actually have four people linked to fortification and the safe house leader. So this would actually be the time for us to start getting these ranks up and starting to gain some intelligence towards fortification. Now, you'll also notice that this item has just appeared next to Hillock. So it's a unique item that gives attack speed now. This does not drop from him. This is his item, and this is providing a buff to Hillock. So don't confuse this with an item that you expect to drop from him in the safe house or in random encounters. It's not going to do that. Instead, this is a buff towards him. It's essentially there to let you know that he has this buff so you can better prepare for future fights against Hillock. Now you'll notice he's gone ahead and he's actually dropped some random items, which is always going to happen when you choose one of the two options, they will drop some items. Now these little icons do represent some special items and I will show you what those do after we've decided what to do with Asling here. So as you can see here, we have a different option under R1 now, because if you go to one of the other characters, you have the potential of that R1 changing. As I mentioned earlier, L1 will always be interrogate, but R1 can sometimes be betray, where they're going to give themselves a positive stat change and potentially a negative stat change, or removing someone else from the board altogether and in turn betraying them which will usually cause a red rope, which you won't see any on this map right now because I haven't had anyone betray anyone else, but a red rope indicates essentially the opposite of a green rope. It's a negative interaction. It's a negative relationship between characters in the syndicate. The other options, as you just saw, we can execute, which gives rank, or we can bargain, which typically gives flat intelligence. Now, bargaining is usually a better option for gaining intelligence most of the time when it comes to trying to get this ranked up because of the fact that one, the character isn't going to be off the board for three turns, and two, they're not going to lose that rank and they will stay in the current group that they are in. So we are going to choose to bargain and gain six fortification intelligence. It's three less than what we would get for imprisoning her. However, as I mentioned, she won't be off the board. She's not going to move and her rank isn't going to drop. So we've discussed what these actual stats mean when you're looking at all the characters. We know that the bottom area, so if we're looking at Hillock here, we know that the bottom represents the items he'll drop in the safe house that his group is mentioned in the red text and that any items next to him are buffs that are applied to him individually. We also know that if we hover over the different areas, 
that it will show us our progress towards actually unlocking and being able to run the safe house. So right now our safe house located for fortification is at 6%. Now the other thing to know, and this is kind of your overall storyline goal, and I say storyline goal because it's not necessarily the most rewarding thing to do here, but it will progress you through the syndicate storyline and reset your board once completed. Once you run the safe house, it's going to give you progress towards this experience bar. And this is the mastermind of the immortal syndicate. So once that is up to 100%, you can then run the mastermind safe house and get those rewards and essentially complete the board. Now it will give some decent rewards and it does let you learn the storyline of the immortal syndicate. However, the rewards there typically aren't as great as the rewards you can potentially stack by running these, you know, smaller safe house areas. Because we can essentially, throughout defeating uh, these characters in random encounters, we can move them around the board, we can rank them up, so we can place specific people within specific groups and run that safe house to stack all of their rewards within one safe house run and keep the board intact. And then essentially go through and do it all over again. Now one thing to note, now you saw the reward here, so she gives Veiled Armor if we were to run her in the Fortification Safe House. However, if she were in Research, Intervention, or Transportation, she will give a different reward. So as people move around the board, if we were to move her to Transportation for whatever reason, she will no longer be giving us Veiled Armor, that reward will change. So that is another thing to keep in mind and another reason as to why imprisoning and being taken out of a group and potentially put into another may not always be your best option. Also keep in mind, say that Asling and Hillock both give us options under R1 that we didn't like and we didn't want to imprison either of them either. We could always just leave the map and not interact with either one of them. We're not going to be penalized, we're not going to be rewarded, but you don't necessarily have to choose an option if you absolutely don't want to and all of your options are just bad and they're not something that you want to do. So that for the most part wraps up the actual syndicate board itself and all of the different things that you can do within the board. So as we see, she's also dropped one of these special items with that little icon to the left of it. This is the other main reward for the Syndicate content. So with these items, we can actually go ahead and talk to Jun. We'll just pick up that item so it stops highlighting it. And hit Triangle to unveil items. Now, unveiling items has two purposes. And you can tell if an item can be unveiled by that strange, you see at the very bottom of all the affixes, that kind of black and white glowy ghost type text. That means it's a veiled item. It'll also say underneath it that you can take it to Jun to have her unveil it. So if we hit square to move it over and hit R1 to unveil, it is going to give us three options of another stat that we can put on this item which can potentially be good if we do find one of those items that we want to use. However, it's good for another reason as well. You'll notice the little experience bar looking thing underneath all three of these stats, which you can scroll through the, the right stick. That experience bar represents amount of experience that you can gain in order to be able to actually use this crafting um, modifier on other items back at your hideout on your crafting bench. So much as how you were traveling through the world before and finding these different crafting benches to learn more crafting recipes, these are more special crafting recipes that you can learn strictly by running the Syndicate content. You're not going to get these any other way. So I would recommend running Syndicate even just for these extra crafting options. So what we'll do here is, um, well, one other thing I'd like to explain first, these ones that are headed towards level one, we have not unlocked those as crafting options yet. Obviously, if we choose one of these, it will level up to level one, and we'll be able to craft that level one modifier onto items. Now the one below here, it shows from level one to level two. 
So that means we already have it unlocked at level one and can craft it onto items back at our crafting bench already. And we're on our way to getting it to level two so that we can strengthen that modifier to craft on our crafting bench. So the roll, the tier will be better. For this, I think we'll go ahead and choose the energy shield and we'll unlock that. So if we hit R1 while it's highlighted, and as you see right there, it says new crafting unlocked. So we can now craft this onto our regular everyday items that we run into. So we'll hit square to take that item back. And we'll just go ahead and unveil a few more items. Let's increase physical damage, penetration of elemental resistances, and chaos resistance. So I think we will go with unlocking this modifier because that will be helpful for the next build that I'm planning on doing. 5% increased attributes, not bad. As you can see, we're almost to level three on that one, which is pretty solid. So we will just learn a new recipe. Or a new crafting mod. Unveil here. Attack speed, we'll go with cast speed. Now, as you can see, that one didn't fully unlock the level. It just gave us progress. You're not always going to unlock a level when you unveil an item. You may just gain progress towards gaining that level. We'll move that back over there and that will complete our veiled items. So that essentially covers the basics of the Immortal Syndicate. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind, which may help you when uh, grinding, if we hit square to go to investigation, it'll bring the board back up here. Now, as you go through turns, and a turn is considered any time you run into a map that has the Immortal Syndicate on it, Eventually, if you get these to 100%, they can actually deteriorate. And what that means is after three turns, it's going to go from 100% completed to where you can run that safe house down to 90%. Now, the reason why that's important is because when it's at 100%, you're actually guaranteed to not run into that specific mission. So if I'm specifically trying to grind out fortification, if I have transportation, research, and intervention all at 100% and the safe houses are ready to run, I actually won't run into any of those and I'll be guaranteed to run into fortification uh, when I have my regular random encounters. So something to keep in mind as well that may also help you with setting up your board. However, that's going to conclude the video. As always, any sort of questions you may have on the Immortal Syndicate, feel free to pop down in the comments section and ask down there. Um, I have been also attaching the uh, Discord channel that I've created for the community at the bottom of all my videos the day after they post. So as of tomorrow, you should see that link in this video or you can check out previous videos. It should be attached to all of those as well. Um, as I've been mentioning lately, I will be streaming starting next week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on YouTube at 8 p.m. Central. I'll be streaming for at least an hour. And uh, the other thing that I've been including in all the videos lately has just been my Twitch channel. Um, if there's enough interest and people start subscribing on Twitch, I'll probably start streaming there as well. But for now, since the community is on YouTube, I will be streaming strictly on YouTube to start off. So thanks again for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope this video was useful. And until next time, may the RNG be with you. Always.